night and thought the Lord was leading me to change directions into the subject matter of why um, Nick Saban decided to keep Tua in, 35 nothing in the second quarter. But the Lord quickly said no. But like Arsenio Hall used to say, things that make you go, hmm. But we're going to, to look again at another passage in Scripture about thankfulness. And I believe wholeheartedly that the songs that we sang in worship goes hand in hand with our message. Colossians chapter 3, if you found your place, say amen. I'm going to begin with verse number 12. If you're able, I ask that you stand as we honor the reading of God's holy word. Just read a few verses here. Reading from the NIV, it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other. Forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. Listen, listen, be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, through psalms, hymns, songs of the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, it is indeed a joy and privilege that we gather together in your house this morning. Lord, we first thank you for the worship that we have already experienced as we lift our voices to you. And we pray that that uh, is a segue, Lord, to prepare our hearts for the message that you'll have for us this morning. And Father, as my prayer is each and every week as I stand behind this pulpit in all humility, that Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Lord, if there be one, even one, who's never accepted Jesus, that's within the sound of my voice this morning, Lord, that you would just begin to uh, tug on their hearts. Uh, allow them to be receptive to the message and to the gospel. Lord, allow them to recognize that they, as we all are, are sinners in need of a Savior. And Father, that today could be their day of salvation. And Lord, that you would just pour your Spirit out upon us this morning as we give thanks and praise to the one who died for us. Lord, be with us now throughout this message, and we'll give you the praise. We ask all this in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You know, when I, I shared with you not long ago, about two months ago, maybe a little bit longer, I got off the Facebook. I just got tired of all the stuff that was going on. But one thing that I really liked was a site that I shared with you called the Babylon Bee. And that was a satirical site. It made fun of Christians. It made fun of uh, politicians. It, it did so in good humor. So I was kind of missing that. And I realized that they have a newsletter that they send out weekly. So if you're not on the Facebook, you can get their newsletter. Um, and so I've been getting that in my email. And there was something that hit me this week that I just I had to share with you because it was just so funny. Because about this time is when I'm, you know, gearing up for Christmas, my Andy Williams, my Elvis, I grew up listening to Christmas music. And if y'all know your Old Testament history, before David became king, he, he was ushered into service of King Saul. And, um, and for lack of a, uh, for an understanding, he, he was called to play the lyre, which is like a, a, a harp. So let's say King David, every time... The King Saul became vexed with an evil spirit because the Lord's spirit has left him. He would call on King David to come in and play the harp to soothe the savage beast. Well, I saw this in the Babylon Bee this week. And it says, scholars now believe that Saul threw a spear at David for playing Christmas music well before Thanksgiving. <laughs> and that cracked me up because my family would tell you it used to be November 1st. And as much as I love Christmas music, uh, it started to be October 31st. Then October 3rd. And then I think I started around October 15th this, this year. But listen, it, it, it's music to uplift the birth of our Lord and Savior. We don't have to wait until Christmas to sing Christmas songs. We, we can sing Christmas all year round if, if you're crazy. I mean, if you really want to. But what we can do that. I heard this, uh, I saw this cartoon 
um, in the paper some time ago. And it was um, the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. Of course, we all watch that in, in, in Christmas. Just as the picture shows, Charlie Brown is bringing Thanksgiving dinner to Snoopy. Snoopy looks at his bowl of dog food and says, Are you kidding me? Everybody else on this day is eating turkey and the trimmings and mashed potatoes and, and, and all the works, and I have to eat this bowl of mush of dog food. He looked at it for a little bit. He looked at Charlie Brown. He said, Well, I guess it could be worse. I could be a turkey. <laughs> I guess it depends on the perspective on what you are thankful and grateful for. And that's the subject matter of our message this morning. Because there is always something that we have to be thankful for. That's what our scripture tells us. In all that we do, be thankful to God and give thanks for everything. Here's another way to look at it, as our scripture says. We should always have a song of thanksgiving in our heart. We should always have a song of thanksgiving praising God for what He has done. If you can't think of nothing, then shame on you. Because if you put your two feet on the floor this morning, you need to be thankful. You need to be grateful that you woke up and that you were breathing in and breathing out. Someone wrote, it seems that about 40% of churchgoers believe that singing in church is for singers only. Well, the truth is, singing is for all believers. The relevant question is not, do you have a voice? The relevant question is, do you have a song? A song and your heart, because in a true worship service, that's what we do. We sing, we glorify, we give praise to God, not just because He's done something for us. We give praise because of who He is. He is high and lifted up. He is worthy to be praised. In a true worship service, we need to have a song to sing. We may not be, be great singers, but God doesn't say, give thanks if you're a great singer. God says, give thanks. Sing, rejoice, and be thankful always because He has truly blessed us in our lives. So that's what I want to look at this morning. As a matter of fact, in our notes, and I always like to have mine handy, I personalized it. I didn't say we, I didn't say our. I, I, I've made it personal. So as we say our points together, I want you to say them with me. And, and, and then I'll give you the, the fill in the blank. I'm thankful to God for... Oh, mercy. Okay, let's try it again. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll edit that out on the video. Let's all say it together. I'm thankful to God for... My church name. His blessings. I'm thankful to God for his blessings. We'll get to that one in a minute. Linda. There was an old song that we sometimes sing. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. I see a mallet. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. We could just make this a whole entire worship service. <laughs> Listen, I, I often hear somebody say, if you can't sleep, count your sheep. If you can't can sleep, count your blessings. You need to be grateful and thankful to God for all that he has done. The author of our passage this morning, the Apostle Paul, he knew where his blessings came from. There's an old expression that says, he knew who buttered his bread. Amen? He, he knew where his blessings came from. He shows us that no matter what circumstances that we ourselves have gotten into, that we should always be joyful with a song of thanksgiving in our hearts. You know, another passage of scripture I'm reminded of is in the book of Acts. If you remember this, Paul and Silas were in Philippi, and they were preaching, they were going around. The Bible says that a, a it doesn't say a young girl or a girl, it just says a woman who was um, possessed with a demon, and she could see the future, and, and, and be, she was a fortune teller. And it said that everywhere they went, she followed them around. And here's what she said. These men are the servants of the Most High God 
They are showing you how to be saved. Listen to them. Well, after a while, for some reason, that got on Paul's nerves. So he turned around, rebuked that woman, cast that demon out of her, and when he did, the ability for her to see and tell fortunes was cast out as well. Well, this woman had made her masters all kinds of money for what she could do. Well, that ability was taken away as well. So the Bible says that the masters had Paul and Silas thrown into prison. And in Acts chapter 16, it tells us that they were put in the inner cell and fastened their feet with stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, listen, in jail, singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Even in the midst and the clutches of a Philippian jail, they had a song of thanksgiving in their heart. They knew that God was in control. Even in the depths of a prison, they knew that God was in charge and that he was on their side. Listen, Paul and Silas, they could have just shut down. They, they, they could have just had a pity party and started feeling sorry for themselves, for their situation and where they ended up. But they did. The Bible says that they sang a song of thanksgiving. Listen, we've had a lot happen to us. And a lot of times, we feel sorry for ourselves. Like, I don't know about you, I've, I've never been in jail. Well, not really, but, but that's a story for another day. But I've always had a song of thanksgiving on my heart. Because what happens is, as Christians, we have something happen to us in our life or in our family, and we start to feel sorry for ourselves. A lot of times people blame God. A lot of times, and you see this, people abandon the church, and they don't want nothing to do with their faith. We have got to always have a song of thanksgiving. We've got to stop feeling sorry for ourselves when things happen. Jesus said, in this life you will have trouble. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. He said, if they hated you, remember, they hated me first. You know what? Worship, I think we, we've already done this morning. And I'll say this a hundred times. Worship not only uplifts the name of Jesus with our hallelujahs, but it prepares our hearts for the message. It gets us in the right frame of mind to be ready to hear and accept what God has for us each and every Sunday. It's not just a box that we check off that we went to church or that we went to Bible study or that we, we, we called somebody. It's actually doing all those things because we love and we worship God. Our scripture tells us to give thanks for everything to God, the Father, and the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, we've got to give thanks to God for everything. In the good, in the bad, in the in-between. Thanks that knowing He's in charge, He's in control, and no matter what mess we get ourselves into, He might not get us out right away, but He is still the author and finisher of our faith. And He's the one that we have to give thanks to. So we need to give thanks to God for His blessings. The second thing is, we need to, and we've got to say it together, I'm thankful to God for my family. I heard this story about a young man who just graduated college. And he had a degree in accounting. And after he got his degree, he had to take his CPA exam. And he ended up passing with flying colors. And he became a certified public accountant. Well, his father was an immigrant to the United States and had now owned his own business. And so with this self-induced self-importance, this young man who was now a CPA went back to his father's business, and I'm sure he had the, the right uh, frame of mind, the right attitude, but he began to criticize his dad without even knowing it, saying, Dad, you don't even know how much money you have. You've got your accounts payable in this drawer, your accounts receivable in this drawer, you keep all your cash in the, the drawer, you, you have no idea how much profit you even have. His dad looked at him and said, Son, when I came to this country, all I owned was a pair of pants. He said, now your brother's a doctor, your sister's a teacher, and you're a CPA. He said, your mother and I own this little business. We have our own house. We have our own car. He said, add all that up, subtract the pants, and everything else is profit. <laughs> Sometimes we need to add it up, subtract the pants. Because everything in our life 
is blessings. We came into this world with only the eternal soul that God has given us. And we have to remember that everything else is a gift and a profit from God. You know, around Thanksgiving every year, me and my family, we have a tradition. We sit around the table before we embark on that beautiful spread that's before us. We go around the table and we say at least one thing that we're thankful for. It doesn't matter if we have guests, family, friends, neighbors, anybody. We all ask somebody uh, as we go around the table to say at least one thing that we're thankful for. And I remember one year back in um, uh, 2004. Um, it was Thanksgiving of 2004. That Marsha's mom was eating Thanksgiving dinner with us. And I, I went last. And I let everybody go around the room and uh, around the table. And when it came back to me, I, I said what I was thankful for. And most of the time, it's my family and, you know, God's blessings and, and the job that I had. And, uh, but I said, I'm also thankful that God has seen to bless us to give us or will give us another child. And man, you should have seen my mother-in-law's face. She was like, what? You're brain? You know, that, that, was, that was our baby reveal. You know, we didn't have to shoot no rockets or anything. I just said what I was thankful around Thanksgiving day. And of course, um, before the 2007, we did the same thing with, with Scott Jr. And, and finally, I think her mother said, when are y'all going to stop? You know, we, we, had, we, had six by, we had six by then. But listen, if you don't have a Thanksgiving tradition, start one. So start something with your family. We, we also, we, we like to play football on Thanksgiving morning. We've had some huge games with family and friends, and we've had just family. Matter of fact, you always, always think that some of the things we do doesn't rub off our kids. Well, Nikki and Jesse, Nikki's husband works in retail, so he has to work Thanksgiving night. So he can't come to our house for Thanksgiving, but Nikki and Jesse are coming. You know what Nikki said her, she's looking forward to? Playing family football. And I was like, of course, this year with my surgery, and I can't catch a ball, let alone throw one or run one, but we're going to do our best to make an attempt to play a game of football because I said, honey, I thought you hated those games. You, know, you always ended up crying, you know, and just because Dad, you always yelled at me. I'm like, well, if you run that route, I told you to run, you know. I, I remember one year we were playing with church. We were playing with our youth. And I had the ball. Marsha was in front of me. I grabbed her by the back. I'm like, block! And I pushed her towards everybody. <laughs> Man, she yelled at me so bad. <laughs> but if you don't have a family tradition, start one. Maybe it's reading the scripture. Maybe that will rub off into to reading each and every day. Because there, there's one thing I know for sure. We can never give too much thanks to God for what he has done in our lives. I'm thankful to God for his blessings. I'm thankful to God for my family. And finally, let's say it together. I'm thankful to God for all things. I read this story. I believe it was um, in a magazine. I get American Legion and things. And especially around the holidays, they, they will, will publish these different stories. Maybe it was I used to get reminisced in the good old days. And Man, I, I miss the good old days. Amen. But I heard about this man who made a list of what he was thankful for, and I wanted to share it with you. He said, I'm thankful for the taxes I pay, because that means I am employed. He said, I'm thankful for the clothes that are just a little bit too snug, because that means I have enough to eat. He said, I'm thankful for a mom that needs mowing, windows that need cleaning, and gutters that need fixing, because that means I have a home. He says, I'm thankful for the spot that I find at the very end of the parking lot at Walmart. Because that means I'm able enough to walk. He said, I'm thankful for my huge heating bill. Because I'm thankful I have heat. He said, I'm thankful for all the complaining I hear about our government. Because that means we have freedom of speech. He said, I'm thankful for the, you'll like this one, I'm thankful for the person behind me in church that sings off key. Because that means I can hear. He said, I'm thankful for the alarm that goes off in the early morning hours. That means I'm alive. And he said, I'm thankful for the weariness and aching muscles at the end of the day, because that means I have been productive. Folks, we, we've got so much to be thankful for, yet oftentimes we take it for granted. We let days and days go by 
without giving our gratitude to the God who allows us to walk on this earth. Think about it. He, he could take us at any time. Yet he's given us a mission. He's given us the Great Commission. He's giving us purpose. And that is to live out a life that's pleasing to him. Not only just be kind to our fellow man. That, that's fruit. Matter of fact, I don't know if y'all heard this, but uh, y'all might not even know who this is. But uh, uh, about a few months ago, Kanye West, uh, a rapper, got saved, had a conversion experience, got baptized, started a, a worship service that happens uh, every week somewhere, and somebody else said, well, I just don't believe it. I, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't believe he's truly changed. I don't believe he's saved. And my brother asked me about it. And I said, I just reminded him, I said, listen, the Bible is clear. You will know my children by the fruit that they bear. And I was honest. I said, listen, I don't know Kanye's heart. I think only time will tell if it was a true conversion. But I'm going to tell you what I heard somebody else say in the church world. Leave Kanye alone. Let Kanye be saved. Let Kanye lead worship. Let, let, let him sing a song to the Lord. Jonathan Moore, civil services, and he said, listen, I don't know Kanye's heart any, way, any, any better than anybody else does. He said, but I know that there were people who were there that were genuine in seeking after God. And I'm a big Michael Vick fan. And when Michael Vick um, got arrested for that dog fighting, and he's from Virginia Tech, and he's from Virginia. Matter of fact, the only time his high school ever beat my high school was when he was the quarterback. Then the only time his high school ever beat our high school again was when his brother was the quarterback. But while he was in jail, he got saved. And I remember somebody specifically saying to me, well, he only did that because he was in jail. You know what I said? And? <laughs> what does it matter what brings you to your breaking point? What does it matter what brings you to your rock bottom? What matters is that you call upon the name of the Lord for salvation. Be thankful to God for all he has done. You know, people show thankfulness in many ways. And I heard about a family, and, I, and I'll close with this, because I think this will put things into perspective. They would invite people to a Thanksgiving service on any month of the year. The mother said, uh, we, we invited in our invitations, we wrote, we're not celebrating an early Thanksgiving. We're celebrating that my husband had been found cancer-free. She said this was in March. She said, we sometimes have 10 Thanksgivings a year. She said, we mark happy events for which there are no formal celebration dates, a job promotion, a graduation, a good medical report. She said, sometimes we do it with a dinner party. Sometimes we do it with a picnic. Sometimes we just do it with an outing, but always with as many family members as possible and as many as we can round up. You know, 10 Thanksgivings a year might sound good. It might not be good for our diet, but it might sound good. But... When you look at what the Apostle Paul said, for Christians, ten thanksgivings is not enough. He said in this passage, in 317, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Whatever you do, give thanks to God through Jesus. I want to close out by asking you a simple question. What is it that you are thankful for. You know, for me personally, I, I would tell you I'm thankful for my wife, and I'm thankful for my family, I'm thankful for my friends, I'm thankful for my church family, my brothers and sisters in Christ. But you know what I'm most thankful for? Jesus. I'm most thankful for my salvation. I'm most thankful that he died for someone as unworthy as me. Amen. But it doesn't stop there, because he just didn't die for me alone. He died for you. And the Bible said that on the third day he rose from the grave and now he sits at the right hand of God the Father. He died for the sins of the world. And if we're not thankful for anything else, we need to be thankful for his sacrifice. You may wake up tomorrow and your bank account it might be just as close to empty then as it is today. Right? Your car may have trouble starting uh, worse tomorrow than it did today. You might have to go to a job that you load with the supervisor that you can't stand. But you have a job to go to. 
You have a car to get there, and you have a bank account to receive that direct deposit when it's paid. We need to start being thankful for what God has done. Are you thankful for your salvation? If you say, Pastor, I am, but I, I'm thankful, but I've just never made that profession of faith and given my life to Jesus. Well, listen, you don't have to leave here today. You, you, you don't, it's not rocket science. You don't have to get dressed up, cleaned up. You don't have to look nice, smell, like, smell nice. I can look at all you this morning and say, you all look good. I was in the choir, so if I got close to you, I'd probably say you smell good. But I don't know your heart. And I don't want you to leave here without having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, I was telling some people this morning in prayer that I was leaving my street. If you know where I live across from Big Mike's, I was turning north uh, on 43. And as I turned... I caught the very tail end of an accident. It looked like to me somebody was coming from McDonald's um, trying to cross all the lanes, but I, I can't be sure of that. But a white car hit this pickup truck. The truck hit the curb, and that truck flipped over. I mean, it was literally, as I'm turning and going, it looked like all of it was happening in slow motion. Well, thankfully, and, I, and this is not a cop-out, this is true, I, all I could do was pray. I noticed that people started pulling over quick, so I got out the way with, with my surgery. I, I can't lift anything. I can't, you know, tug on anything. I, I still, I still am under doctor's care, but they got to them really quick. But do you think that person in that truck and that person in that car thought that was going to happen at that precise time? I, I don't think there was any life-threatening injuries. Uh, it'll probably be in the paper this week. But just like that, it could happen. I don't say that to scare you or, or, or intimidate you into coming forward. I tell you that because it could happen. Matter of fact, when I was leaving Fairhope and coming home to come or coming here Tuesday, I went to the pastor's conference on Monday. I was uh, leaving uh, Tuesday morning to get here. A car crossed. We were on a two-lane road, crossed the center line, and I had to, I didn't even have time enough to beat my horn. I had to jerk the wheel. You know what they were doing? On the my life could have been snuffed out because some idiot thought it was important I'm sorry, some person thought it was important to send a text message I, now you're just talking about young people she didn't look that young that person didn't look that young <coughs> I just say that because we don't know guys I, 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 I love you and I love you enough to tell you the truth there's no other way that we can get to heaven but by Jesus it's not Muhammad, it's not Buddha, it's not Harry Krishna, it's not through any other way. The only way, I don't care what those preachers on TV tell you, it's only through Jesus, period. Mm -hmm. And that's who we have to have in our hearts. If you've never asked him into your heart today, then I just pray that you would contemplate where it is that you would spend all eternity if you were to leave this earth today. And then make that decision based on that knowledge. Would you pray with me?